Hello, thanks for calling Premier Gal Tech Support. How can I help you? Okay, so your media is offline and you need to connect it. Sure, this is an easy fix. Do you mind if we do a screen share so I can show you how to fix it? Great, okay, so you are seeing this link media error here and these files are offline. Now this could have been that these files were moved from their original location and Premiere Pro can't find them. Maybe a folder was renamed to something else, so it kind of throws off the whole file path. Or maybe you have it on an external drive that's not connected. So it could be any one of these, right? So um, what you need to do is just tell Premiere Pro where the file path is now. So you can select any one of these and you can see in the file path that actually shows you where the original location is. So we can try to look there. So we can click here to locate. And what we need to do is go to this file location here and you can see what happened here is the original folder was called footage and it got renamed to all footage. So we don't have to name this back to footage. You can, of course, but we can just open that up and then just say, hey, it actually lives here now. And you can find the specific file, which is the 841.mp4, press OK. Now all the files should be online, but as you can see, a couple of the files didn't connect. So you can lasso and select these clips, can go to file, link media, and now you'll get this dialog box again. And once again, we can go to locate, go to all footage and find those files and press OK. And now everything's back online. Did that help you out? Great, fantastic. And what I recommend doing going forward is to save all your files in the same look. Do they just hang up? I need a pay raise. Smooth operator. Ooh. Hello, welcome to Gal Support. How can I? Uh, okay, so you're trying to export a video, but it's telling you that there's offline material in your timeline, but you can't find it. Is that correct? Okay, yeah, that can happen. All right, let's do a quick screen share here. So here, when you go to export, you get this warning saying that there's offline material, right? And we don't want the offline media graphic being displayed. So let's press cancel. And since you have such a long timeline here and you have no idea where it is, there's actually a quick fix for this. So what you're gonna do is go up to edit and then go to find. You can also press command F if you're on a Mac or control F if you're on a PC. So what you're gonna do is search by media type from this first dropdown. All right, then you need to select contains and then inside of find, you can type in offline and select find all. And this will take you to the exact moment where the media offline is, which is just awesome. So it's here now to link it, you know, you can right click on it and go to link media or go to file link media, and this will show you the original path that it was located in. Maybe it was moved or maybe it just got disconnected. So let's go to locate. And as you can see, it's not inside of the material when we search here, it actually got moved outside. You can actually find the PNG that's missing here called anchor.png because that's the file that's offline. So just select that and press okay. And now it's back online and it's no longer media offline. <laughs> All right, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye now. Hello, Gal Tech Support, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. You wanna know what video review tool me and my team are using right now? Uh-huh, it's actually funny that you asked me that because me and my team actually switched to a new video review tool called Croc and we love it. And actually Croc reached out and they're the sponsor of this video. With Croc, my designers and video editors can upload the latest video edits as well as thumbnails. And I can leave frame accurate time coded feedback, which my editors and I can both see and respond to. With their handy Croc Premiere Pro extension, they can upload their most recent edits here directly from the Croc extension. And they can see any comments that I've made as markers. And if they need to go to that comment to make a fix, they can just click on it and it will take them directly to that comment marker in the timeline where they can fix it and reply and check it off as done. 
You want to know how to install the extension? No problem. To install, you first want to make sure that Premiere Pro is closed. And then from your Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app, just search for Croc. And if you scroll down, you'll find it underneath plugins. You'll click on this and then click on install. You can see mine is already installed here. So now you'll open up Premiere Pro again, go to window, extensions, croc.io. And there it is. And then on the web version of croc, I can click anywhere on the frame to make a comment. And then I can click on draw if I want to add any of these shapes. I can also tag a team member and I can add an attachment. I can make it so this comment can only be viewed by the team or visible to everyone with a review link and then click send. I also love that it's not just a review tool, it's a project management tool. So from the project page, I can go here and I can assign another person to the same project. I can update the due date and I can update the status so that way all the team members know where the project is at. And unlike Frame, Croc lets you have up to 15 members on a pro plan. With Frame, you're limited to five, and then you need to upgrade. And Croc lets you have an unlimited plan without any per seat fees. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> ah, yes, there is a free plan with Croc. You can get up to two gigabytes free on their free plan. And if you want to upgrade, you can use my code PremierGal to get 20% off. <laughs> Happy to help you. All right, just call back if you have any other questions. All right, bye-bye. Hello, Gal Support here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the font isn't loading for a motion graphics template that you downloaded? Yeah, sure, no problem. Let's, let's screen share. So I see here from the graphics templates folder that there is this title here, but you get a little yellow warning symbol in the upper right on all of these actually. And that just means that the font wasn't installed for this particular motion graphics template. You could have gotten a folder of fonts from the designer of this pack, but if you don't have it, then you have to just Google that font and install it. Now it will tell you the font if you just click on this info and you can find the fonts that are missing here. But if we actually just, first of all, drag this into our timeline, first of all, you may get this warning saying that there's a mismatch. That's just because the template itself was designed in a different resolution or frame rate than your sequence. That's okay, just click on keep existing settings. And here it will actually tell you which of those fonts is actually missing. And you can see that it doesn't look right. And that's because Gilroy Extra Bold is missing. And Adobe will try to find it within their Adobe fonts because Adobe fonts has a, you know thousands of fonts available. But if it's not in the Adobe fonts, it can't resolve it. So it says Gilroy Extra Bold is unresolvable. So if you just Google Gilroy Extra Bold, you'll find it here. So you'll just click on one of these until you find a site where you can download it. And it looks like this is it. So you're just gonna download the TTF file and then you can open up your folder and double click on it on a Mac and it will let you install this in your font book the same way on a Windows just located in a different location. And so now Gilroy is installed so it displays correctly and from properties panel underneath your edit text, you will see that Gilroy is now here, which is awesome. What was that? Oh yeah, from graphics templates here, you'll notice that this particular template that we are using is no longer here with the rest of them. And that's because once you drag a Mogurt, a motion graphics template from the graphics uh, templates, it actually moves up to the very beginning as your most recent one. So you'll find it here and you'll see that there's no longer a little yellow warning in the corner saying that one of the fonts is not installed. So yeah, that's it. All right, bye-bye. Okay, so as I understand, you're trying to drag a video into your timeline, but only the audio is coming. Is that correct? All right, so let's share screen and let me show you what to do. Okay, so I see here that when you drag this video clip into your timeline, only the audio is coming, no video. Why is that? Well, it's actually quite simple. If we delete this and we go over here, you'll see that there is a V1 to the left of the lock. This is source patching and it's turned off. Let's turn it on. 
you'll see that A1 here is for the audio source patching and it was turned on, that's why the audio is still coming. But if you accidentally click it off, then the audio won't come either. So make sure it's clicked on. And now when we drag this clip, we get both the video and the audio. Mm -hmm. All right, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Hello, Gal Support here. How can I help you? Ah. The search panel, it's not showing any visuals for you. Yeah, this is actually an easy fix. Okay, so first of all, let's go to our search panel. And the search panel was basically designed by Adobe so it can basically scan your footage to help you search for things based on the content itself, not keywords or metadata necessarily. It's actually what is going on in your video. And you might get a warning here that says, turn on visual search analysis to enable the visual search. It might be turned off. So, you know, all you need to do is click on turn on analysis, but when you do that, it actually goes away. And if you're not sure where that is, you can go to settings, you can go to a media analysis and transcription, and you'll see that what this did was turn on this visual analysis here for you. So just make sure that this is checked in your preferences in Premiere Pro, and then you'll never get that warning. So now when you search for something, let's say I wanna search for happy, all the clips that depict somebody happy will appear here. And this just makes it easier for you to like find find your assets. So, uh -huh. yeah, it's different than the project panel where you organize your assets. So it's basically searching all these folders inside the search panel for something specific that I'm searching for. Uh -huh. Glad it helped. All right, bye. Uh-huh, so for example here, when you select this footage and you wanna delete it by pressing Option Delete to Ripple Delete, the markers stay in the same place, right? Which isn't good, you want them to move with your footage. So there's actually a fix for this. Let's press Command Z to undo that. And what you need to do is go up to Markers and make sure that Ripple Sequence Markers is turned on. And so now when we press Option Delete, the markers move with the footage. Yeah, exactly. This will come in a lot of handy when you're using Croc, for example, for your review notes, and you want the comments to stay at that particular time code. All right, I'm glad it helped. All right, bye-bye. Hello, Gal Support here. How can I help you? Yeah, the masking tool can can be really difficult sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, how to scale it properly. No worries. So when it comes to masking in Premiere Pro, I'll just use this clip in my timeline here that you can see as an example. So if I go to Effect Controls um, and I want to create a, a, a square mask, for example, I can just click on this little square icon underneath Opacity and if you want to scale it proportionally, you might be like, well, it's not working. I can't press shift and it's not working. Well, what you need to do is hover over the corner here, press shift, and then you'll get this little double arrow icon and then you can scale it proportionally. But it stays in that rectangular shape. If you want it to be square, you know, you have to manipulate the sides. For example, you can select these two top ones press um, start to move it and then press shift to keep it in alignment it's still not perfect i know adobe if you're watching this you know that this is an issue but yeah that's how you can make kind of a square by you know manipulating these these sides individually so now let's select on the ellipse mask and right now it's kind of like an oval, it's not a perfect uh circle if we just select an edge here and then press shift it turns into a perfect circle, which is great. And then it will switch to the hand tool automatically and you can you know, reposition it into place. So that's kind of how you can work with shapes. You just need to press shift after you start moving the shape. So it's a little bit different with the circles versus the squares. Oh yeah, I know, trust me. This, is, this has been on my list for Adobe for a long time and they know, they know. All right, well, I'm glad it was useful. All right, all right, bye-bye now. Hello, Galtech Support, how can I help you? 
I see your windows and panels keep moving around each time you open Premiere Pro. Okay. Well... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, basically, the, the easiest way to answer this is by showing you my screen share, okay? All right, so here in my screen share, you can see up here in the upper right is a drop down with all these different workspaces, right? Which basically are designed for different workflows. And right now I'm in a custom workspace that I set up called Demo Workspace. And when you are in any workspace that you're in, if you open up different tabs, for example, if I'm gonna open up um, Lumetri Color, for example, and move this over. If I was going to close Premiere Pro right now, that would stay open, right? Because it's now a part of the of the demo workspace. If I leave this workspace right now and I go to, let's say, a vertical workspace, which places the program monitor on the right, and then I go back to demo workspace, you'll see that Lumetri Color is still open. So you may have created a custom workspace and then you may have opened different panels throughout your editing time which happens a lot i'll move stuff around while i'm editing in that same workspace and that will stay changed but if you don't want lumetri color open in that workspace anymore just you know close it off before you close premiere pro because every time you open up premiere pro the workspace will be the same that you left it at least that's what I have. Um, so if you want a particular workspace, you know, move the panels however you want, move the product panel over here, effect controls, maybe you want effects over here, drag and drop that over here. And now you can go down here and save as a new workspace. And then it will appear here and you can always go back to that one. Maybe you can call it, uh, for example, save as new workspace default. And you can always go back to this default but remember, anytime you open any new panels while you're inside default, it will remain that way the next time you open it up. Yeah, like I said, you know, I'm just a consultant here. You know, I I don't work for Adobe. I'm just trying to help people out. You know what I mean? And if the workspace panels are, are giving you trouble, I recommend going to the forums. But from my experience, it's always good to have a default workspace you can go back to. But just keep in mind that if you open up new panels, it's going to be saved in that workspace the next time you open it up. All right. Well, happy to help. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Last call. Gal Tech Support, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. All right, so you're having a render compiling error. Yes. So this can happen time to time if you have a lot of effects on your clip. So after you render it out, you should get this error message that pops up and there should be a line that says that it happens around a particular time code. Right? Yes, so if you go to that time code, then you can go to your effect controls and you can try and replace some of those effects. Uh-huh, you already did that and it, it's still happening. Okay, what I recommend doing is actually right clicking on your sequence from your project panel. And once you do that, go to sequence settings. And from the preview file format here, rather than using QuickTime, switch to iframe only MPEG and press OK. Yes, so it'll say delete all previews for this sequence. And yeah, you can press OK. Everything will be fine. All right, now can you render it again? Is it working? Oh, that's great. Yeah, sometimes this works for PC users, but remember that sometimes the solution doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, I'm actually going to send you this article here. It's a common issue, but it's very specific, right? Because you use different effects on different videos, right? So you can follow these steps and you can even watch this video um, if for some reason changing to that uh, preview setting like I was showing you doesn't work. You can follow these steps in the future. Yeah. Yeah, sure. No, happy to help. Really. All right. Good luck. Bye-bye now. Okay, break time. <laughs>